Okay, this is um, my first video to document uh, my uh, T25 Synchro uh, two-wheel drive conversion project. If we talk about the, uh, the recipient vehicle and the donor vehicle, this is um, this is where all the parts are going into. This is uh, this is my um, 1.9 DG panel van two-wheel drive. Uh, really quite a sound vehicle, to be honest with you. It's um, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's. Um, not a lot of rust really a few bits and pieces in the usual areas that are easy cleared up but um but not really a lot of rust at all i put a lot of that down to the fact that it was it was just a, a basic panel van that was used as a as a delivery van mostly throughout its life and and um without all the internal bits and pieces you know all, all the padding the panels and whatever else it doesn't really get a chance to condensate or get condensation build up beneath them panels and into the seams i'm sure that has a has an effect, a beneficial effect anyway. Um, I'm probably going to go ruin all that now by panelling it out, but there you go. Um, anyway, so this is where it's all going. I've, the, I've already put, as you can see, I've already put in the light conditions on it. Great, but you can see that I've already done the um, put the piece in there for the uh, for the fuel when a, when a tank is is, is moved. Um, the back plate is obviously in there as well with the metal pipe that goes down to the wheel arch. I'm not really sure if you can. You can see it from there and it really don't matter. Um, but yeah, rest assured that's all in there and it's not going anywhere either. Um, so yeah, that's the um, so that's the uh, the recipient. That's the, that's, that's the van where everything's going into. Let's talk about the, the donor vehicle. And we go back into here. So the donor vehicle, um, I bought this as a, um, it was a, a 16 inch multi-van. Uh, I originally bought it for spares. Um, because it had a, a boxer, it had a um, sorry, boxer engine, it had a Subaru engine in it, um, had a lot of work done on the gearbox. There's receipts there for about 1800 quid, if I'm not wrong, um, and uh, gas conversion uh, as well. There's the tank there, so yeah, there's a lots of lot, and loads of other little bits and pieces as well, that, which really made it a, a, a nice van, apart from the fact that it was rotten, absolutely rotten. Um, when I got it back, I actually thought about actually keeping it it was a left-hand drive van um keeping it and and doing it up and, and repairing it but the van was was just uh, for me i'd have been doing it for the next 10 years and i really haven't got that time to waste um it was rusty in all the normal areas i mean you can see i've cut it all up now um but that's nothing compared to uh underneath the chassis rails were full of mud when i cut it open um one of the the main chassis rail that runs down runs down the back here and if i just look down here um, you can see, or you can see how bad that bit is. Well, the um, the synchro specific part there for the fuel tank that's just hanging off. It's like paper, paper on cobwebs. Um, but the main the main spar chassis well, whatever you want to call it, that runs across um, uh, across the vehicle that was full of mud and um, split. Uh, the floor had moved away from it, um, and lots of other things as well. Yeah, I mean it makes it sound like I'm making excuses now for um, for cutting up a lovely old 16 inch synchro, and I suppose I am. But what's done is done, and this is where I am now at the moment. Uh, incidentally, um, getting the parts, I mean, there's, there's, there's different ways I've seen on the forum for people to, to source the parts for these, um, these, these synchro two-wheel drive conversions. And you can get the kits where you just get everything, um, or most of the stuff uh, that you need to, to carry out the, um, the, the project, or obviously you can do it this way. One thing I'll say about doing it this way is it is an absolute mission if you're going to, well, it was for me. It was was cutting this van up. I did it with a um, with a I cut the parts or cut the van up with a um uh, a reciprocating saw, obviously with the, the metal blades, and that was brilliant. It, you know, apart from the chassis rails where it slows down a bit, it just went straight through it. Uh, but getting some of the parts off the suspension parts that were just rust welded in place, and it was just a real, real mission. Um, but got there in the end anyway. So the engine. Um, the engine uh, was a double overhead, or is a double overhead cam, uh, 2.5 litre Subaru. Um, I drove it across England um, uh, uh, when I bought the van, and it, it ran perfectly. Um, it was a lovely vehicle, lovely, lovely vehicle to drive, or lovely engine to drive. Um, no smoke, no nothing. It's got good compression. Uh, the only thing that was wrong with it really had a slipping clutch. Um, had an RGS, uh, RJES uh, conversion done on it. Um, that's not the exhaust that came with the exhaust that came on it what came with it was split it's actually over there um and uh, was in a bit of a mess so basically i took it down to a long life exhaust center and said can you copy that please 
they did a fairly okay job. I wouldn't say that it's you know I would, I would actually say that probably the um, the RJES one was probably better one better than than the, than that one when it was new, but it is what it is. Um, the engine, all I've done with that is uh, I've changed the belts, um, I changed all the idlers, changed the tensioner. Um, I also had to change one of the belt pulleys underneath here as well, but the top one um, because that was um, it was broken, it was split. So um, obviously I didn't want to risk that. 100 quid for one of them, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, but other than that, all it's had really is a coat of paint just to tie it up a little bit. Uh, did a few little other modifications um, with the fuel rails and that. I'll be using air equip fittings. So obviously I brazed on some, some air equip uh, fittings to go on to uh, the screw on bits to go on there, nipples or whatever you want to call them. And uh, I also uh, did a little modification to the fuel rail as well because the, the um, the fuel pressure regulator was um, was knackered. Um, it wasn't holding pressure, so I bought a different one. I bought a different one and um, a bit of bling and added that to it. It works quite nicely. The good thing about it is, is you can see what pressure you're running at, if it really matters, that is. Um, and, and I can always take that gauge off and add an add a, a, a electrical sender to a, to, a gauge in the, um, to a gauge in the cab if I want it. I still haven't grown up yet. Uh, and, yeah, that's it, really. Uh, the gearbox is sound. Um, where well it was when I drove it back and it's got, like I say, it's got receipts there for, for Maiden uh, for about, Aiden Talbot for about, I think it's near close, yeah, about 1800 quid, something like that. I had a load of work done, done on it a few years back and, and, and it feels solid. Uh, it hasn't got a decoupler. Um, I might get one in the future. Um, for the moment, though, no, I'll stick it out with this. Um, one other good thing about having the um, whole vehicle to... Uh, to, to, to dismantle um, was obviously all the wiring as well for the diff locks, I've got all of them, I've got all the back, back in tubing um, yeah, everything is there really um, obviously the reservoir tank so I'm, I'm not sure what you think in these kits that you get in inverted common, common, inverted commas, that if you get all of that I'm not sure but that's one good thing I suppose about having a van as you can see um, the, the subframe the uh, suspension components, the bigger ones, and the uh, RJES mount has, have been um, blasted and galvanised. Um, yeah, and um, they're all ready to go on, near enough. I've got a few bits and pieces. I've got to, t I've got to still put the bearings into the, um, the front uprights after I've removed the gal from inside where the, the bearing housing um, with hydrochloric acid, um, thanks, to, uh, thanks to Mr. Mule and, and um, he's... Uh, his guide on how to do that from on the forum. He's brilliant, Fred, doing the same thing. Um, the 16-inch arms, I thought when I when I took them off, they looked they looked perfect. But um, when I, obviously when I got them off, they weren't. They, they never are. I mean, you can't expect them to on a vehicle that old anyway. Um, had to change the spring seats or the metal spring platforms. So I got them. Um, I took the old ones off and welded new ones in, and the Outside of each each of these each of these uh, the the um, the bush housing was was rusted away too, so I had to cut them out. And um, I read on the forum on eighty ninety that you could use scaffold bar without any detrimental effects. So having plenty of that lying around, I did that. And it, the external diameter is fine; it, it works brilliantly. Um, welds up lovely. It's nice and strong. And um, but the only problem I found is that um, that, that the internal diameter is about two and a half, three mil, um, a lot uh, narrower or smaller than, than the, um, the the standard sizing. And uh, when it comes to get putting the bushes in, um, that that's not so good. Um, originally, I used or I, I hoped to use the normal standard rubber bushings. Um, and I started off with one of them, and that's five hours of my life I'm never going to get back because um, <laughs> I just could not, for the life, life of me, get that bush in. It wouldn't go in. Uh, in the end, it just I, I destroyed it. So I took a chance and I bought the Powerflex bushings. The rationale behind that was that you could take out the, um, the, the centre sleeve, the, the metal insert or sleeve that runs through the middle of them, and that allows them to squish down when you're trying to get them in there and, and, and push them through, which was essentially what happened. Uh, they, they go in fairly simply with a bit of grease, uh, a bit of copper grease. And um, the only problem is I found is that they, um, when you push the bush in, 
um, they squish out a bit on those those narrow on the scaffold bar ones, so they actually widen than they should be. I don't know if you can really see it on that one. It's, that's not so bad. That one it, it sticks out a bit to the to the right hand side a little bit. This one was a lot worse for some reason. I really don't know why. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just I'm just compressing it down until it comes to the D day when I try and get them in. I've got. I should imagine I'm going to have a bit of a problem, um, and, and it might be you know a bit of a bit of an issue getting them in. But one way or another, I'll get it done. Anyway, so that's the suspension. Uh, what else have I got to talk about? A fuel tank. The fuel tank was all good. Um, it's got the. Um, it came with the, the stainless straps. So I've got to clean up and just get them ready. There's a fuel tank all cleaned up, ready to go with a new uh, a new sender as well fitted. Um, right, what else is there? Talked about the oh yeah, there's the, it came with the big gas stuff there. I haven't taken that off yet. That'll go on at another point after I've gone through it all to see what I need to replace and what I don't. But the fuel tank, the fuel tank is there. or well, the gas tank is there. Um, one of the last things that I did today um, in t taking harvesting or taking bits off of the old um, the old ch the old chassis was uh, I took off the um, off cleaned up the the power steering rack um and here it is there i just took all basically i drilled off drilled out with the spot welds for all the bits and pieces where it was connected up to the the uh the chassis rail and, and and the turret legs um so that's all cleaned up and ready to go good thing about that was it is not too rusty i mean there's a bit of surface rust surface rust but it is it's solid which i'm quite pleased about um also, while I was at it, I took off the um, the, the, the centre um, cross member as well that runs underneath there through which the, the, all the linkage and the cooling pipes all run through. I didn't really need to because um, I could modify the two-wheel drive one, but while I'm under there, at least I've got the option, if I want to, to take off the two-wheel drive one and, um, and replace it with a proper synchro-specific subframe. Um, <laughs> A bit more work for really probably no reason, but we'll see. I might. I'm, I'm trying to try, trying to stay as faithful as I can to the um, the synchro. So um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, right. Okay. Um, there's the um, there's the front diff. I've got to get that cleaned up, ready to go back in as well. And next to that is the um, is just thrown down there is the um, is the right hand drive um, power steering rack which is I'm going to obviously need because I've, I've got a right-hand drive vehicle and, and it was a left-hand drive that, that I broke. Uh, and there it is there. So basically, I've just got to take a few bits and pieces off of that um, and uh, I'll be using the, um, that one now. I don't know if it, how that is. I don't know if it's got any leaks or anything. It's just I bought it off of someone, put a forum ad out and, and um, someone came back. So I'll see. I'll give it a clean-up, check what I can on it, but I'm not really going to know until I start pumping high-pressure fluid for it whether or not it's going to, um, going to be any good. I hope it is. Um, I'm going to have to make up new pipes as well, obviously, um, but that's not really an issue other than cost. Um, I'll do that when that's all fitted to the vehicle. I think that's it for the moment. So, um, oh, suspension, suspension, suspension. Um, yeah, the, the, I'll be using the, the springs that the, the vehicle, that the, um, the, the, the bus came with, and I've also... I had to cut out the, um, the the shocks from the front; they just wouldn't come out. Um, so I might, won't be using them. I've, I've bought some Trailmaster shocks, front and rear, um, so they'll be going in there. Oh, I'm also doing a, a, a. It came with a rear disc conversion too. Forgot to tell you, um, it came with a rear disc conversion. I think it was one of them foot bus or foot bus or whatever you want to call it ones. Anyway, it didn't work um, when I got it. Anyway, because. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, let's have a look. Find us. Yeah, it's one. Of, it came with these discs. It came with these discs and these calipers. Um, yeah, um, solid discs. So I, I wasn't too happy with it anyway. It wasn't working. So I got. I had some stuff. <laughs> I had some other calipers in stock, if you want to call it that. But I had these. Cleaned them up and everything. Changed the seals. These are 43 millimeter Lucas uh, Lucas um, calipers, and I'm using them in conjunction with some newer or different um, carriers, and they'll accept a 22 millimeter disc. Uh, for the discs, I'm using these uh, these black diamond 280 millimeter by 22 vented discs. Um, they're a bit Carlos Fandango. Um, I was originally I was just uh, I ordered up. 
some grooved discs, but they um, they phoned me and said um, they didn't have any of them in stock. But did I want to? Did I want the uh, the drilled and grooved instead for no options? So for no cost option. So um, I said, yeah, okay. So yeah, they're a bit probably overkill. Um, inside there. Rear drive shafts, all new boots, um, new boots, new um, new CVs and everything, all greased up and in them bags, ready to go back on again. Um, he, these are the, um, the sink, the 16 inch rear hubs. You know, let's put them somewhere where I can show you properly. Basically, um, yeah, these are these were these were blasted and painted up. I was going to galvanise them, but I thought it was a bit silly, really. So I've just—they've been painted up, new um, new bearings and everything. Uh, and these are the turned down hubs. They're same diameter now as the um, as the as the standard front hub, um, so that they could fit those discs on. So yeah, they're all ready to go. So everything really for the rear end of the vehicle uh, for the engine for this swap or the, the, the conversion is almost production line styly sort of ready to go now. Um, just in the next couple of weeks, really, I just got to get everything done for the front, and um, yeah, there will always be things that I need to do. As I'm trying to trying to get it all done so I can do it with a, as least amount of disruption and as quickly as possible. Because um, I've been doing this long enough now, and I just really want to crack on with it and drive the vehicle before the winter gets here. So anyway, I think that's it now. I'll stop uh, stop banging on about it and um, do another video again when. Um, when I actually start doing the uh, the conversion itself. Cheers.